Hey there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we are going to take a look at another new feature of Octane's 2025.1 beta version which is decals. And we are going to have a look at the standalone and at Blender because Blender now has the new feature set implemented. So without further ado, as I'm a little bit tired today with an extra big sip of coffee, let's get started. A decal or a decaling system is basically just a fancy word of putting stickers onto objects and Octane just has gotten a dedicated system for that. So what we can do here is move around decals and then decide the priority of them for example. I did a lot of videos about decals, I linked the most recent one in the upper right corner if you're interested. As this system is more streamlined but still not that easy to understand, I'm going to run you through a couple of settings here that will make you hopefully understand how it works. By the way, if you against all odds got your hands on one of the 10 circulating 5090 cards, the latest Octane standalone 2025.1 Beta 2 is now supporting Blackwell. I would be really appreciative of benchmarks if you got your hands on one of the two cards available internationally. Flaran, this is for you. Welcome to standalone land. Flaran just told me in a comment that I skip over the land part whenever I talk about standalone. So hopefully in unison with Cinema 4D land and Blender land, this makes for a more rounded experience. But finally, let's talk about the sticker in the room. We have the anisotropy material here, which is a little bit too complex for my taste to explain stuff. So let's exchange it for a glossy material that is much more simple. The setup process for a decal system is a multiple step one. Now one thing that's really important to know is that the new decal system is working within the texture level and not the material level. What I mean by that is you intercept the textures that make up the material and do not exchange the material. But rather than talk about it, let's actually show you. Let's actually make the bottle a little bit more fancy by adding a marble texture into the diffuse here. This comes in a little bit stretched, so let's unstretch it a little bit here by going with 0.5 in the Y scale. Let's say we want to add a logo sticker here. We need to intercept whatever goes into the data of the material here. To do so, what we need is a right click textures. Sorry, this is out of the bounds of the screen. Go to Utility and then select the Decal Texture. So what we need to do here is go in between that and that actually feeds in the Decal data later on. As we are only caring about the diffuse channel of the material for now, this is all we got to do here. The rest of the Decal is set up outside of the material in the object context basically. To continue with our workflow, we need at least one empty geometry slot. If you don't have that, you can create a geometry group and this comes with at least one empty slot or you can create more up here. Let's finally create a decal node by right clicking yet again, then going to geometry and the first entry here is already the decal node. Now you could already block that in, but this would leave us with no option to move our decal. So we need to right click once more, geometry, and then off screen again, find the placement node and we need to wire that up in between here. As you can see, there's no decal yet, and this is because we haven't populated our decal node. So let's do this next, and what better texture to use than a UV map to see what's going on. Here we go. And as soon as we've done that, you can see the decal appear. Now, since the scale in the placement is one, that means it's one meter by one meter, so let's make it 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and you can actually see now it's a real decal. If you are having difficulties seeing what's going on, there's actually a gizmo now. So you can hit on this button here that's red and you can see now there's a bounding box for our decal. By the way, if I turn around the gizmo a little bit, you can see this noopsie here. You might have seen something similar with area lights and actually it's the same way here. So we are projecting from this direction onwards to there. At least that's my understanding for now. Let's actually move it up a little bit. So 0.05 for example, and then make it even smaller. So 0.05 there too. And you now can see that the gizmo is gone again. 
The reason why is that it lives inside of its bounding box. So what we need to do is move the bounding box outside here again, so it intersects with our bottle wall. Now I hear you say this is all fine and good, but aren't there more options to shape this thing? And yes, there are. And the most obvious one is the opacity. So if you really want to make this a logo, let's bring in a alpha mask here of this logo and then plug it into the opacity here. And then you have the logo with the UV map in the background. Let's actually move it up a little bit. So 0.175 and make it a little bit bigger, 0.08 for example. Here we go. Now that we've established the base workflow, let's summarize everything in some short sentences. Thanks to the decal node, we can store different textures inside of the geometry context, while the placement helps us to get the decal to the right position. To see the decal inside of the material context, we need a decal texture. That is basically passing through whatever it's fed, unless it's at the position of a decal, then it switches and puts out the decal color. To let you see what's going on, we use the decal texture in the diffuse slot of the material. It's important to know that it would work with any other texture slot of the material as well, of course. Which brings up another point, in that it might be very limited to use just one texture in multiple slots, as you want to have more than one. Therefore, I'm relieved to say that there's a workflow for this too. Let's have a look. So let's say we want to add a bump map, but we want to have a different bump map in our decal than outside of it. To do so, we need to go back in our scene context to the decal node and add another input. And this creates another input for another texture. So what I'll do is bring in a texture with a nice bump pattern here and then connect it to the texture to slot. To make it a little bit more obvious what's going on, I want to unplug the opacity and give it back its full strength by going with a grayscale color so we can see our UV map whole. To make this all work, we need to define our texture back in the bottle base. So we need to duplicate the decal texture and then plug it into the bump. It's a little bit hard to see, so let me switch to clay mode here. And you can see now the main bottle is defined by the marble texture and the bump of the decal is defined by the UV map. To switch it to the texture that we've just plugged in, it's as easy as going to the decal texture index and set it from texture one to texture two. Here we go, now we have defined the second texture that we just plugged in here. There's a lot more I could mention for this process, but let me finish up with two points. First of all, I'm happy to say that normal maps are also supported. If we go over to the decal texture yet again, you can find that as the normal input here. The second point that I want to mention is that we have blend modes. So instead of getting one texture or the other texture, we can blend or add both. So we have both the marble as well as the texture that comes in through slot two. Also, you can do the same thing for normal maps with the last blending mode here. And this is when you have a normal map going through as well as a normal map coming through this slot here. Now let's switch over to Blender and explore things with a couple of extras there. And welcome to Blenderland. I would have done the same tutorial part in Cinema 4D as well, but as of now there is no Octane 2025.1 beta available for Cinema 4D unfortunately. So fingers crossed it will appear soon. But now back to Blender, the initial workflow is rather similar, so shift A and then go with a decal and then we go with a decal texture which we will plug into the albedo. Next instead of a texture I want to use a grayscale value, so grayscale color with a value of 0.1 and this is all done here. Now, when it comes to our decal texture, actually the workflow is a little bit different as we need to create a proxy object or a stand-in object. So shift A over the viewport and let's create a cube because it doesn't really matter. The object is not visible later on. Now, with the cube still selected, let's go to the material context and create a new material here. Let's call it decal01 and actually delete the material inside of here. Now, what we want to do is go to the data context and scroll down to the Octane Mesh properties. To be honest, when I first did that was a little bit confusing, but we are going to set geometry nodes in here. 
Now, same as in the standalone, first I want to lay down a placement node. Here we go. And then pluck it somewhere here. It doesn't really matter. Then probably as expected, go with a decal node. Here we go. That plugs into the geometry of the placement. To activate all of this, we need to go back to the data here and select our material decal01 and then have a look in here Then select the node that is closest to the output. So in this case, placement. And from this point, it's very much the same as in the standalone. What we can do, for example, is bring in our trusted UV map again and plug it into the texture slot. Now you can see we have our decal on our object. Much too big though. To get down to a halfway decent size, what we need to do is click the plus icon on the transform here on the placement and this gives us the transform node. So it's the same as in the standalone again, just scale it down here and probably not quite the same, but we also have a new button in the new version of Blender Octane, which is the gizmo to see what we are actually doing here. What I'm guessing is that it gives us different results because the axes in Blender are different than the base axis in Octane, where Z and Y are basically swapped. What's also different to the standalone is that we have this object, this cube that we produced before, and therefore the coordinate system is used. So what we can do is go actually to the cube's coordinates and then move it around. And you can see if we move it 90 degrees, we sort of get the right orientation here. So let's actually do the same as in the standalone before, move it up a little bit and then actually also bring in the logo here and put it into the opacity. Here we go. For the next feature I haven't shown before, so consider this a bonus. Let's make the object a lot bigger and then angle the cube here. What we need to do is go to the bottle copy that texture and paste it into the background and connect it here. And then you can see that the logo actually appears within the boundaries of the bounding box on the background as well. If you want to extend the visibility to the background, what you can do is go to the transforms and actually transform the set axis. So the bounding box is longer in that direction. Let's get rid of the gizmo for now and set it a little bit lower, something like this. Another cool thing that might not be this obvious is if we duplicate our cube by hitting Shift D and move it, we have two decals now. Those are both using the same material at the moment, but we can duplicate one material for the second cube by hitting this number here. What's also important is going to data and then link the second material here. What this allows us to do now is use different textures for the second decal. And if you're not satisfied with the order of things, so what's in front, we can go to the lower one and increase its priority, for example, to one to bring it to the front. And this is basically it. I think the system is a bit complicated, but once you get a hang of it, it can be really powerful. For example, if you have a workflow with PBR materials that you can then plug into the different texture slots here and then pass on to the main texture and therefore feed the main material with them. Also a really nice, a bit tedious to set up feature is that those textures can be applied on different materials and they will overlap in the right portion and right way. I hope I was able to spark your interest with this and especially you Blender users can be creative and figure out new ways to decal. Thank you all for listening and let's thank those people who make this video possible of course, my Patreons. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, Dui Jim. For D Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Ami Sheetreed, Aram Sadikian, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, Eva Nilsson Tavares, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Raphael, Ralf, Reiko, Reshock, 
Shamos Johnson, Shiro2049, Terry Wayne Ranson and Yasin Rupp. Hi there and welcome to the After Show Party. Thank you very much for listening and watching to the end. This week there's not a lot going on. I still feel not great, not terrible. <laughs> so hopefully that gets better soon. As always, if you have any suggestions for tutorials, if you for whatever reason find the new feature series boring, be honest and let me know in the comments below. I'll make it rather short this week, as I said in the beginning, I'm rather tired. This is one of those videos again where I tell you to be creative on your own and figure something out to symbolize a decal. And now, as is tradition, I wish you a great start into the new week. A good time if you're watching this later, and I say happy sticker bombing. Bye.